Alright, what's up guys? So, I'm giving you guys an update. This is going to be a quick short video because I'm still kind of like mentally dealing with it. But my doctor's appointment was yesterday. I went to go see a gynecologist, but she also is a fertility specialist. Basically, she did, um, she did an ultrasound. She did a pap smear. And she did... Um, I want to call it an x-ray, but it was really like a probe. It's almost like an ultrasound, but they stick the probe inside of you to see how your womb is. If you, if everything is healthy and stuff like that. So that's what was done. Now, let me put this first. It's very hard to find a fertility specialist that takes certain types of insurance. Now... I've been searching for a fertility specialist for like the last, I want to say, four months. So I had my lumpectomy in February and I did my radiation in June. And I was supposed to start my fertility treatments from June. And we're now in the month of August. So with that being said, here's a disclaimer. The hospital does have a fertility specialist, but because they didn't take my insurance, I would have had to pay something like a $5,800 out-of-pocket expense in order to harvest my eggs and for them to freeze it and for them to hold it while I take my chemotherapy medication. So because of that, I had to find outside sources. So I found an outside source. I found multiple sources, but a lot of them wasn't available. And a lot of them were saying that they wouldn't take my insurance, which is ridiculous because I have great insurance. But for whatever reason, a lot of them wasn't taking my insurance. So I finally found one and I got it done yesterday. So you guys are ready for the gut punch that I got yesterday? That Are you ready for this information? All right, so boom. The the doctor asks me questions. I had to fill out the questionnaire. I had to tell her what was up. She asked me why I was there. Of course, I told her that I had to like, retrieve my eggs, freeze them, and then um, I would have to. I'm gonna start my medication, my chemotherapy medication. So for those who went through breast cancer like I did. And had a lumpectomy, mastectomy, double mastectomy, double lumpectomy, whatever you did. This is going to be, if you're of childbearing age, you have to do this if you want to have kids. If you don't want to have kids, you really don't have to worry about it. So here's the theory. The theory is if you have breast cancer, it could be connected to cervical cancer or cervical issues. That's what I read. And I'm a research buff, so I really be looking up things and trying to you know see what's in store for me what i need to look out for what i need to be aware of like if you tell me something i'll nine times out of ten i'm gonna look it up and research it so that's just a disclaimer but anyways so we get to the probing part where she's looking at the at my uterus so she's looking at my uterus and she tells me that both my ovaries are full i have a lot of eggs in both ovaries so being that both my ovaries are full she asked me do i get cramps now i've never experienced cramps until after my radiation treatment was done and i got my first cycle once i got my first cycle after radiation i've experienced ridiculous cramps and when i say ridiculous cramps to the point where it feels like my ovaries are gonna pop on both sides so I don't know if that's a symptom. I don't know if that's a reaction. Because I've never experienced cramps when I have my period. Never. So for that to be happening now, I'm assuming that it's just an after effect or a symptom. I, I don't know. So here's the kicker now. So she's looking further and she says that I have follicles in my uterus. So I'm like, what does that mean? So she's like, well... That signs that you have PCOS. 
Now, I've heard what PCOS is, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I've heard of that, and I've heard of that's the reason why a lot of women cannot or it's hard for them to get pregnant. So, once she said that now, uh, I want to say that I just blacked out because it's like I see her mouth moving, but I don't hear her talking. So, that's like me in my head like, oh my God, now I have to deal with this now. Now, I just had a lumpectomy. I caught the cancer early. Now, I have PCOS to deal with. But then again, I was in my head because I've heard that I might have PCOS before. And this was when I got into my first accident when I got in when I had to get my hip done. So here's a little backstory. I've never had regular periods until I had to take birth control as a teenager to regulate my periods. And before I was on birth control, I would see my period probably like every other month or um once every two to three months. And then when I would get it, I would have it for a long for a very long time maybe the longest i remember having my period was 21 days which is obscene you only supposed to have the, your period the most is seven to maybe eight nine days that's kind of normal but i used to have my periods for long periods of time so my gynecologist at the time that prescribed me the birth control she would tell me that you might have this new syndrome that's out called PCOS. And because of that, your periods are delayed or it comes and it's very heavy. You might have um, issues with um, getting pregnant. Now, at the time when she told me this, I must have been maybe around, I want to say 18, 19. And then after that, she would tell me that when she would test me, she's like, oh, your testosterone levels are always high and your estrogen level will be either at the margin or a little bit below where it should be. So with that being said, I've always had in the back of my mind that I had like a hormonal imbalance. And you could tell from my body that I had a hormonal imbalance. Like my breasts were never round. Um... I still had like I was still stuck in a phase between prepubescent and adulthood. Like I've never shaped out in certain areas like you know, once you get your cycle, that's your time where you go from prepubescent or prebescent if I'm saying that right and into adulthood. That's the time where your body matures into how it's gonna look as an adult. So here we are with that in the back of my mind. Now, at 2021, I was in a seriously committed relationship, and we were talking about conceiving a child, and we also was trying to conceive a child, and it almost happened, and it, it, I, <laughs> I took a pregnancy test, and the pregnancy test, first, the, the first test I took, it came out positive, and then when I took a second test, it came out negative. And then I started panicking, and then I told my mom about it. And she's like, well, you might need to take a blood test because sometimes those urine tests don't really work. So with that being said, I went through the whole process of going to a diagnostics lab where they did an ultrasound. I even did the dye that they put in your IV to make sure your ovaries are active. So I went through the whole process. And the results of that were my ovaries were active. Um, one was working um, more than the other, which was to be expected. She was like, yeah, your left side is a little bit more active than the right. Maybe that's due because of the injury that I had. Because I, I, I did have surgery on my right hip when I got into the accident. So that's just my backstory. So, like I said, in the back of my mind, I always felt that something was kind of off. Because I've tried on two attempts to try to conceive a child and it wasn't like you know just one week and I just decided to or we decided to it was like a whole couple of months maybe well into a year we tried and it wasn't working or it wasn't happening or it seemed like it was working and then all of a sudden I would get my cycle or I would get my period 
So here I am at 31. <laughs> I've, like I said, I have different plans for my life right now at this stage and at this age. I really wasn't banking on like oh I'm 30 and I want to do this because I'm 30 and blah 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 it's not like that I really wanted to do certain things because those are goals that I had set for myself I wanted to be in a position where I was physically healthy and financially ready and able to start my own family at the point of my life right now where I'm at at the same time this is really not the end or be all because i did catch the breast cancer early and when i say early i didn't even reach the first stage i was like at point five of zero before i could reach stage one so i caught it early and in the back of my mind i always knew that something was either wrong with me why i wasn't getting pregnant or why I wasn't why I would think that I could be pregnant and then I would get my cycle or something like that would happen. So in the back of my mind, I always knew like things weren't wasn't really the way it was supposed to be. So for all of those who are going through PCOS, whether it's stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, not even stages it's form a b c and d because it's four forms of pcos that's what i mean by doing research so if you have pcos and you're dealing with it i want to know how you guys are processing it or how did you process it when you first found out that you've had it do you have children are you currently pregnant have you had pregnancies and it didn't go full term like all those questions I have because I've did the research on trying to find out like those answers to those questions so I'm not entering a phase where I have to figure it out on what I'm going to do I definitely want my own children I definitely want to have my own carry my own children I definitely want to go through the process of you know motherhood conceiving carrying your child birthing your child raising your child i want to go through all those stages naturally so from the research that i've done there's women who have pcos but they have to go through different forms of fertility treatment so they say um fertility treatment is the answer to pcos because it helps conceive it helps you um carry a child like it's different forms of low doses fertility treatments as at that that helps pcos now for us or those who had breast cancer and is in remission you know fertility treatments is out of the question because it it helps activate your estrogen which is bad because it activates your hormonal chemical balance for estrogen and that's what you don't want because your estrogen receptors can also bring back the possibility of you catching or coming out of remission for breast cancer see that's really some bullshit because it's like a catch-22 like you gotta go through this if you want to deal with one issue but if you go through this it can reactivate another issue and it's like it's never a fucking ending honestly but <sighs> stress like I really was in my head yesterday when I tell you I was in my head yesterday I was in my head yesterday and I'm just going to take it like this. One day at a time, deal with one problem at a time. And right now, what's focused, what's focused for me is to remain in remission. I have to take these, these pills, these chemotherapy pills for 18 months. 
I have to deal with that for 18 months. And then when my 18 months is done, then I can deal with what I need to do. What I need to do as far as having my baby or babies. So, at least now I know that my ovaries and my eggs are, are good. My uterus is healthy. It's just that I'm just going to have to take low doses of hormonal not hormones but fertility treatments which basically is hormones but low doses for that so like i said if you guys know anyone or you are going through the pcos thing and you just came out of breast cancer you're in remission you're currently going through it like please 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 send me your info because I really feel like I don't have nobody to talk to about it besides talking to my mom. Now, granted, here's a sidebar. I know I'm 31. I'm not scared about having a child at 33 or 34. I'm not scared of that because my mom, as fine as she is, she had my little brothers, my little brother, my little sister in her 40s. I mean, I'm a 20. I'm 20 years ahead of my sister, and I'm 20 three years ahead of my brother so i'm not afraid of age and then there's a lot of women in my family who had children late at a very late age if you would consider a late age but i'm not afraid of that i just like i said i would like to form a pcos group which maybe i should start on facebook and women who went through a lumpectomy. I mean, the hospital that I go to, they offer those things, but they're not like me. So guys, this ends the journey through 30 vlog. And that's my update on my lumpectomy. I have my post-op radiation checkup next week in September and I have to see my oncologist the day after that so I can start my chemotherapy medication so you guys won't see one another video like this probably for another week and a half but I'll keep you guys updated like I've been doing and I'll catch you guys in my next one bye